This is a Seeking Delphi special edition, previewing the 2019 Undoing Aging Conference. I'm Mark Sackler. The future lives here. A little over a year ago, I had the pleasure of interviewing Aubrey de Grey on this podcast. As co-founder and chief science officer of the SENS Research Foundation and author of Ending Aging, he's one of the world's leading figures in the quest to reverse human aging. Aubrey is also a key organizer of the second annual Undoing Aging Conference to be held later this month in Berlin, Germany. Significant progress has been made in the past year, and much of it will be discussed at the meeting. Aubrey now joins us for a preview of this year's program. Aubrey, always good to have you. Welcome back to Seeking Delphi. Thank you for having me. Let's start out with the obvious question. What is the Undoing Aging Conference? How did it come about and what's the mission? Well, this is the second of a series of what have now turned into annual conferences held in Berlin, which are organized by me and Sense Research Foundation in collaboration with another charity named Forever Healthy, which is a, a German organization bankrolled by uh, one of the German, Germany's most prominent web pioneers, a guy named Michael Greve. Uh, Michael is a very generous donor to Sense Research Foundation and also invests in a number of companies, including some of our spin outs. And one of his activities is to sponsor this conference. So the nature of the conference uh, and the conference series. It's very much the same as that of the conferences that I ran starting back in 2003 in Cambridge, England. Um, those ones were only every two years. But uh, the essence of them is that they um, showcase the entire range of research areas that are being pursued in the quest to develop comprehensive rejuvenation comprehensive repair of the damage that the body does to itself throughout life that eventually causes us to get sick when we get old. Um, and of course, as time has gone on, progress has been made. This has become more and more exciting. Uh, things have got closer and closer to the clinic. And a number of the research areas and the research um, groups that will be showcased this month, this coming month in Berlin, will actually be not just academic groups, but they will be um, work that's now moved into the private sector and uh, attracting very good investments. So it's an extremely exciting time, and it's going to be an extremely exciting conference. As far as actual content is concerned in the conference, what do you think are going to be some of the key takeaways? What's new and exciting since last year? Oh, well, there are definitely plenty of advances from last year. Um, so, I mean, of course, what's exciting kind of depends on your perspective. Some of the people who will be coming to this conference are veterans who have been following the progress of these various research areas for many years, but it's equally relevant to people who are new to the field and who just want to see what it's all about. It's hard to say what's most exciting, but I think we can certainly say that the overall trend is that everything is exciting, that the rate of progress in each of these important areas is accelerating. And what that basically means is that we've got this wide range of different types of damage that the body accumulates throughout life. They all need to be repaired one way or another. Some of them are undoubtedly harder to repair than others. And that means that the progress that's been made has been faster in some areas than in others. But the ones that are the most difficult, the ones that really saw essentially no progress for a long, long time, have now really taken off. So we now have people presenting on work that, uh, for example, will transfer the mitochondrial DNA into the nucleus. This is an idea that's more than 35 years old, and uh, essentially no one had made any significant progress in it for a very long time until a couple of years ago when we were able to announce a big breakthrough. We'll be announcing subsequent breakthroughs that we've made in the meantime. There's a group looking at the restoration of elasticity in the 
in the major arteries and in the skin, which is very important not only for wrinkles, but also for hypertension. And uh, that's, a, that's an area which, again, was completely static and stagnant for a long, long time until we came along and worked closely with a group at Yale to push it forward. And the um, eventual result at this point is that that has now moved far enough to be spun out into a company. It's moving forward very rapidly now. That's just a couple of examples. But also, of course, we are going to be showcasing a lot of research that has not actually been done by Sense Research Foundation or sponsored by research, Sense Research Foundation, just stuff that's been done that is independent but closely aligned with us. We at the center of a very substantial network of researchers who understand the logic of what we're doing and how their work fits into the, the jigsaw, so to speak. And another thing that's very important to highlight is that the attendees at this conference will include investors, people who have quite deep pockets and who really understand that this is the next big thing. As a futurist, Aubrey, while I'm somewhat interested in the science for sure, I'm probably more in interested in a variety of ancillary issues. For example, some of the things that go along with funding and regulation in trying to get there as far as rejuvenation is concerned, but also the implications after we get there, social, political, economic, etc. To what extent is any of this going to be in the conference? Well, there's certainly going to be a session on translating this science to the clinic, which includes very much uh, a lot of discussion of the regulatory aspects, how these things will navigate the regulatory hurdles that exist, and also indeed how the, na how the nature of those hurdles is evolving. Uh, and perhaps those hurdles are actually going away, or at least partly going away, as a result of the opportunities that are coming along. There's certainly a very extensive amount of discussion going on worldwide right now between scientists and regulators and, of course, policymakers with regard to what's appropriate in that regard so as to maximize people's quality of life in consequence of medical advances. I also note there are a couple of interesting end-of-day sessions that don't deal directly with reporting on the latest scientific breakthroughs. One is uh, a debate of some sort, and the other is a report on the supposedly oldest living woman, Jean Calment, who died at 122 uh, back in the late 90s. Talk a little bit about those issues. Sure. So the debate, which is going to be the last item in the first day, will be actually very much on the science. The purpose of this is to give the audience a feel for the spectrum of optimism, shall we say, that exists with regard to how rapidly we're going to be able to broaden and extend the whole concept of damage repair to a point that's really comprehensive, comprehensive enough to actually confer significant postponement of the ill health associated with old age. The general idea that aging is the accumulation of damage is now very mainstream and accepted, and indeed it's not something that would be of very much interest to debate in an audience like this. It's something that kind of goes without saying now. Furthermore, the idea that the repair of damage is the common sense way to go, rather than the alternatives of just kind of coping with the consequences of the damage, which is essentially what geriatric medicine does, or alternatively trying to tweak our metabolism so that damage is not created in the first place, you know, that's also, again, something pretty much accepted now, that those other two alternatives are just not going to work, and damage repair is the way to go. But that leaves a very important question, which is how easy it's going to be to repair that damage well enough, comprehensively enough, to give actual benefits. And Vadim Gladyshev and I are, um, I would say we're, we're not exactly at opposite poles, but we're somewhere apart on that spectrum of optimism. So we will be discussing the pros and cons of how, how rapidly things are moving and how rapidly things are likely to move and how far they need to move before we get that result. Then at the end of the second day, yes, we're going to have an extremely interesting lecture from Nikolai Zak. So Nikolai is a mathematician by training, in fact, and he just got into this area very recently as a result of just you know, becoming intrigued by it but he was very diligent in identifying a number of items of 
really just su suggestive circumstantial evidence which go together to form a really rather persuasive argument that the person um, supposed to be the oldest ever, namely Jean Calmar, who is supposed to have died at the age of 122, more than 20 years ago now, um, was actually not uh, such a person. And in fact, she was, the person who died in 1997 was actually her daughter. The evidence for this is from a wide variety of sources, and the uh, assembly of that evidence into an argument has just been published a few days ago in the journal that I edit, Rejuvenation Research. It's causing a huge amount of controversy. A lot of people are feeling that this is a kind of affront to French national pride kind of thing. And some of the discussion about the pros and cons here has not been terribly scientific, to be honest. So we want, to, we want to change that. We want to make sure that the community is made properly aware in an objective way of what's actually going on here. Sounds fascinating. I'll be looking forward to, to hearing that one and to meeting you there. And before we sign off, just tell our listeners if they're interested in attending, how they might uh, arrange that. Sure. Um, so, of course, you can go to sense.org, our um, foundation's website, S-E-N-S.org, and uh, plenty of links to the conference website from there. The conference website itself is undoing-aging.org, and the conference happens in Berlin starting on March the 28th until March the 30th. It is definitely still open for registration, though the early bird registration deadline has passed. And, of course, the website includes the, pro the speaking uh, lineup. There are going to be, let me think now, probably, let me see, about 33 plus 16, about almost 50 talks um, that's going, that are going to be featured during those three days. And they will cover, as I mentioned, a great many different topics. Uh, the speakers are all absolute world leaders in their fields, as I always manage to pull together. So uh, please be there. Thanks for joining me here today, Aubrey. I look very much forward to meeting you in Berlin. Well, thank you. See you there. The links that Aubrey mentioned are available on the webpage for this podcast at www.seekingdelphi.com. If you do decide to attend, be sure to look for me and say hello. If you can't make it, look for a Seeking Delphi podcast with highlights from the conference coming in early April. Don't forget that you can subscribe to these programs on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Player FM, or YouTube. And you can follow Seeking Delphi on Facebook. Thanks for joining me. My technical assistant is Mohamed Marouf. Until next time, I'm Mark Sackler. <laughs>